In the resin-scented air above a Norwegian pine forest, a rough-legged buzzard prospects for a territory and a mate. Once Norway was cloaked in pines, which colonized the land after the Ice Age glaciers retreated. Today only fragments of those ancient forests survive, but where they still stand, they support a complex community of animals. Some are familiar, but the vast majority belong to a secret world existing unnoticed in the forest. struggles to grow and bear fruit. Its life and those of the animals that live in its boughs will be bound together in an intimate partnership. Norway's pines are as varied as the land in which they grow. In the cold, windswept mountains of the north, the trees are short, slender and crooked, stunted by the harsh conditions. Further south, where it's warmer, they grow tall and straight. Some, like this tree, are 400-year-old giants. Whatever their shape and size, they're all varieties of the Scots pine and they provide a home for some fascinating wildlife. In April, the trees stir after months of standing dormant. So do hordes of insects. Aphid eggs, laid last autumn, burst with new life. Black woodpeckers, the biggest of their kind in Europe, time their breeding to coincide with the forthcoming season of plenty. A pair can chisel out 20 pounds of chippings during the three weeks it takes them to prepare a nest chamber. Kappa is found only in pine forest. The male is nearly a meter tall. Its strutting display is a ritual designed to attract females to a traditional courtship area. After sunrise, the capercailies take to the trees. They're one of the few birds which can eat pine needles. A specialized digestive tract enables them to break down the tough leaves to extract the nutrients.
Another bird which is almost entirely dependent on the Scots pine is the crossbill. Its staple diet is pine kernels. It has evolved a specialized crossed bill for prizing open the cones and a long tongue for extracting seeds. Crossbills are one of many species threatened by deforestation. They're also vulnerable to predators. Red squirrels spend a lot of time searching for birds' nests. If they find one, they eat both eggs and young. But the laying season has yet to begin, and these squirrels are preoccupied seeing off potential rivals and chasing a likely mate. The Scots pines, even dead ones, are now crawling with insects whose breeding season is in full swing. To a female longhorn beetle, the weathered timber offers many cracks and crevices, suitable places to hide her eggs from parasites and predators. As it disintegrates, a fallen pine releases nutrients and enriches the soil. Tunneling insects speed up the process. Bark beetles lay their eggs in the roof of their burrows. The larvae that hatch feed on the bast, the layer under the bark. Sap beetles wander through the maze of tunnels, searching for the last traces of sap in the dead trunk. The abundance of prey attracts predators. The ant beetle hunts bark beetles. Beetle larvae are the woodpecker's favorite food. The birds play a vital role in the pine community. They help to rid living trees of insect pests tunneling beneath the bark. Their growing chicks will eat several hundred a day.
The adults keep the nest impeccably clean, often disappearing from sight to retrieve droppings from the floor of the chamber. Teng Mam's owls breed almost exclusively in disused black woodpecker holes. At three weeks old, the owlets no longer need brooding and can swallow their food whole. The owls are not as fastidious as the woodpeckers. Once the female has left the nest, she never ventures inside to clean it. The chicks stagger about in an ever-growing mound of pellets, rotting rodents and other debris. Outside, an adult keeps watch, ready to drive off would-be predators like the pine marten. This agile opportunist will eat almost anything, including insects, berries, bird eggs and chicks. Though some birds will fall foul of predators, most will escape this fate. For as long as pine forests existed, there have been insects feeding on them. Saplings are vulnerable to a particularly spectacular beetle known as the pine weevil. The weevil's razor-sharp mandibles pinch small pieces of growing tissue off the pine, leaving the tree open to attack by fungi and other insects. In plantations of young trees, the weevil has become a serious pest. But in a wild forest, with trees of all ages, the damage it causes is negligible. In early June, the pines themselves blossom. The male flowers are bursting with pollen. These are female flowers. When they're fertilized, they will develop into pine cones. The pollen is loosened by the breeze. The shape of the female cone itself creates air currents, drawing the pollen between the scales to where fertilization takes place. In one year's time, these red flowers will have grown into green cones. In two years, they will ripen to release dozens of seeds, a few of which may germinate to produce new trees. Many insects flourish in the new growth. These are the larvae of the fox-colored sawfly, voracious eating machines. Overall, the tree looks healthy enough. It can withstand the ravages of thousands of tiny mouths. Not all insects are enemies of the pine. Wood ants are true partners. They eat insects and rid the pine of thousands of harmful pests. The tree provides the ants with a rich hunting ground, as well as an endless supply of needles to build their massive nests. As many as three million ants can live in one colony. Scout ants, whose mission is to locate prey, radiate out from the nest in all directions. The sawfly larvae seem an easy target, but when the ant attacks, the larvae bring a secret weapon to bear. Chemical defense. The ant retreats, disorientated by contact with a tiny, sticky drop of gum.
contains a potent chemical resembling the pheromone which the ants themselves secrete as their danger signal. If the sawfly larvae can smear it on the ants' antennae, the reaction will be instant panic. The scout is suddenly so alarmed that it cannot even find its way back to the nest, let alone summon reinforcements. The sawfly continued to plunder the pine. An eyed ladybird is beneficial to the tree. It can eat hundreds of sap-sucking aphids in a single day. and aphids have other natural enemies. Among them is this tiny wasp. It's a parasite which lays its eggs inside living aphids. hatches within, consumes its living host, pupates, and a new wasp slowly cuts its way out of the aphid shell. In the southern pine forest of Norway, on warm summer nights, pine hawk moths sip at wild honeysuckle. The life of this moth is closely linked with the trees. By day, it hides on a tree trunk. Its wings are a perfect match with the bark. Only a slight movement betrays its outline. When they first hatch, pine hawk moth caterpillars are conspicuous, but they soon take on a tinge of green and become less visible. The projection near its hind end mimics a thorn and is thought to deter potential predators. While they're still small, they can only chew the edges of pine needles. The damage is easily recognized. By July, the caterpillar is a vivid green. The stripes help to break up its outline and conceal it among long, thin leaves. By the end of summer, the caterpillar is too large to be disguised as a needle. So, it molts. At first, the new skin looks much like the old, but in a few hours, a brown stripe begins to appear. A fully grown caterpillar resembles a twig with needles on either side. In a few more days, it will pupate and turn into a chrysalis.
A fox-colored sawfly larva also prepares to enter adult life. It spins a cocoon in which it will pupate. Inside, it slowly changes form. At the beginning of autumn, a fully developed adult cuts through the silk case. Only the female is truly fox-colored. The male is black and smaller, with feathery antennae. The females release a perfume to attract males, and after a short swarming, they mate. After an hour or so, the pair parts, the male to seek new mates, and the female to search for suitable pine needles in which to lay her eggs. What influences her careful selection remains a mystery. She must make a cut into the edge of the pine needle. Her ovipositor, the egg-laying tube, is the ideal tool. It's shaped like a keyhole saw. She'll lay six to ten eggs in the needle and then cut into another until she's laid about a hundred eggs in all. Mm. Not all insects evade winter as an egg. The pine hawk moth caterpillar is heading underground. The camouflage jacket of skin is shrugged off. What emerges is a soft-bodied pupa. Even now, the ghostly image of the pine hawk moth to be is visible. But at this stage, the transformation slows down. The skin hardens, and the insect simply ticks over through the cold days of winter. Insulated under a blanket of snow, the chrysalis lies dormant, waiting for the thaw before completing its development into an adult. Against the blizzards, the Scots pine stands firm. In the avenues between, elk wander in their year-long search for food. But the pines and their sleeping partners stand waiting for the sun of another spring to bring them back to life. Next Monday at 8.30, the secret life of the tiny owl that lives in the forests of Northern Europe and North America.